All right. Good morning, everyone on StreamYard. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're right uh, in the middle of our weather forecast on 580 WIBW. And as you see on the screen, State Representatives Ken Rogers and Lisa Moser are joining us for uh, this morning's edition of the Ag Issues Program. So as always, we look forward to this when the Kansas legislative session is underway, as is the case right now. Uh, it's the rarity that uh, we're getting them both at home, and we'll let them explain that uh, coming up here in just a bit. So uh, stand by for those of you watching on StreamYard, and we'll be back with you here in just a second as we wind down the weather forecast that's going live on 580 WIBW. Thank you very much, meteorologist Dan Holiday, with an update on the weather for this week. And as you heard, a marked difference coming up from what we're going to see temperature-wise today versus what the low may be when you wake up Wednesday morning. And the transition of that is going to take place Tuesday evening, going from north to south across the state. Right now in the capital city, we have a clear sky, 36 degrees at Blair Airport but already up to 45 degrees this morning at Ford's Field. A pretty wide range of temperatures across the state of Kansas. We have 150 degree reading down in the southwest corner of the state in Elkhart. This morning on the Ag Issues Program, it is our monthly legislative program that we do during the Kansas legislative session when it is in session. And joining us to do that this morning Ken Rogers, who is state representative representing the 110th district from Agra. Ken, good morning. Good morning, Greg. And also joining us this morning, uh, and a welcome return, Lisa Mosier, state representative representing the 106th district from Wheaton. Lisa, good morning to you. Good morning, Greg. It's good to be here. All right, let's get to it. And we mentioned earlier that we uh, have uh, both of you from home because right now, timing-wise, uh, you just hit the turnaround as far as can halfway through the right. session, quote-unquote. So uh, you guys are have been on a little bit of a break here uh, as you uh, head towards the uh, second half of the session. It's always great to be home, I tell you. It is, uh, and it's great to go to church on Sunday morning and know you don't have to rush back to Topeka. So that is always great, and 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 a, and a double bonus enjoying the warm weather. A little concerned uh, for this wheat when we have 70, 75 degree weather in in February, but uh, it is good to be home. It's good to uh, interact with constituents. In fact, I I judged a four uh, H. Uh, regional club day uh on saturday so it was able to get around a bunch of young people and and that was great as well and so really uh, a chance to recharge our batteries if you will and and kind of take a look at what's going to be going on the second half of the session the first half um you know we had a snow day and we had some other things but then it really wrapped up and uh we we uh you know there's a lot of things left kind of on the table but you know, Greg, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but uh, I'm I'm so pleased with my uh, my vice chair, uh, Representative Mosier. Uh, I don't know where I'd be without her. I mean, she 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 is so organized. She takes so many notes. Here I am, just kind of doing my thing, and and she remembers everything, and so she keeps me in line. But uh, uh, I, I think overall, Greg, and I think Lisa will share that. I mean. Uh, Ag Kansas Agriculture, the House Ag Committee, I think had a pretty good uh, first half of the session so far. Well, Lisa, you get to follow that, but uh, uh, just some of your thoughts here uh, through the first half of the session. Well, uh, first of all, Ken, thank you for the kind words. Uh, note taking is something that I've done since I was a little girl, so it's just part of who I am. But uh, I think that the Ag Committee kicked out some really positive legislation and, um, you know, like Ken said, there's still a lot 
left to do, but I think we're in a good position to, to get some things accomplished. And yes, since I have been home, I have been outside with my family and my cattle. Yeah. Well, well let me ask, uh, because so much concern about the mud, I don't know in the Wheaton area if that was the case, but obviously the warm weather, if you had mud, it's been drying that out considerably. Yes, um, we had our share of, of moisture, thank the good Lord. Our ponds are full and things look good, um, but we did, the cattle did have to, you know, deal with the mud situation. We went through a lot of bedding, um, but again, we're grateful for the moisture and the cattle came out of the situation no worse for the wear. All right, Ken, let's uh, highlight some of the things that uh, your committee, that as you were chair of the House Ag Committee, excuse me, highlight some of the things that uh, you had through the session so far. Well, I think one of the biggest thing I, I, you know, last year we talked about water being the issue of the session and the water committee really did a lot of good things. Uh, this year, I think one of the challenges we had is uh, there was a pesticide bill uh, that we needed uh, to work through the process. We have done it now on the House side. This is working with, with EPA, and there was a lot of moving parts. We want to make sure that, um, you know, Kansas farmers and, 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 and applicators um, can still kind of control a little bit of their own destiny, if you will. I mean, I don't mean to, you know, say that, you know, it's, it's the Wild West out there, but uh, the Department of Agriculture had to work with EPA on on uh, making sure that as some new rules and regs came down, that uh, applicators were uh, were uh, in, in, in compliance and doing some other things. And so we as a committee really took a lot of time, not only just for that time of one uh day of, of, of hearing, but also had another almost work session where we brought back all those to testify to, at, to ask, answer questions from our committee members. I want to make sure we had a full understanding. My committee, uh, our committee that, that, that knew kind of try to find a Kansas solution to this and working with the folks at Feed and Grain, great helpful corn growers, Farm Bureau, um, and of course the department in, in trying to really find the Kansas way to move forward and then submit that back to EPA and uh, and then kind of go from there and, and really to make sure that the best interest of, of applicators, private applicators especially, were, were taken care of. Uh, that was probably the, the biggest thing. We, um, we updated um, uh, some of the uh, commercial hemp uh, situation, which we didn't do a lot other than try to reduce the fees. But uh, if, if you want uh, to be able to grow hemp, it, it won't cost you quite so much to, to get that license. And so we'll see if that happens. And so those were probably uh, a couple of things. And uh, we did we did a lot of work on, on several things that, that uh, uh, kind of hopefully will help our livestock producers. And, uh, and Representative Mosier was uh, really kind of leading the charge for those. Yeah, and Lisa, uh, the brand renewal bill, uh, I know you uh, worked very hard on that. Uh, what can you update us on there? Well, we did pass it out of committee. Um, unfortunately, it didn't make it above the line before turnaround, but we were able to, Chairman Rogers and I were able to get the bill blessed, which um, is an action that you undertake when a certain piece of legislation um, doesn't move forward before the turnaround um, days end. And that will that basically lets the bill stay alive so it can be addressed on the House floor. And then hopefully once it passes there, it would go to the Senate to begin the same process over again. But um, a little bit of history about uh, the brand program in Kansas. The Kansas Department of Agriculture rides herd over roughly 17,000 brands. And it was started in um, the division of brands was started in 1939. And currently today, there are still 233 livestock producers that have a brand registered that since 1939. So it talks about the, the brand speaks about the legacy to livestock producers in Kansas. Originally, it was, it was um, implemented to show ownership in the case of lost or stolen livestock, but, but over time, it, it truly becomes a family's legacy. Um, our, I still have the, the original application from my dad's brand when he applied for our family's brand back in 1962. And we have friends that have a brand that dates back to 1855. Um, and so 
the industry was polled, the KLA and Farm Bureau asked their members about this because the last fee update was in 1991. So it's been 33 years ago. And at that time it went from $35 to a cap of $55. And the, the price today is still, it's only 45 online and 50 if you do it by mail. And so changing this legislation would allow the Kansas Department of Agriculture to go up to a maximum of a hundred dollars, but um, it, it's going to it's it needs it needs to happen. It's it's been thirty three years and brands last for five years, so we're talking ten bucks a year right now to keep your brand registered. And so um, we just feel like this is this is a piece of legislation that that needs to move forward for the good of our industry. Uh, industry folks are willing to pay for it. And uh, it, we'd really like to see it happen. I this think also, the key word, oh, go ahead, Ken. I'm sorry. sorry. Th this, what this does, this also helps pay for the uh, the inspectors that go out, and because those are special agents with the KBI, and so that partnership with the Department of Agriculture and, and Attorney General. So that's 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 the reason why some say, well, it is a fee increase. Well, it is, but you know, we want to make sure that uh, you know we don't have. Uh, Rustlers, rustlers know they'll be uh, they'll be handled here in Kansas. And a key. And it also, um, sorry, no, um, no, it also pays for one person within the KDA to to manage the program as well. And but the key there, you said, uh, Lisa, as well, the ranchers are willing to pay for this. To be, you know, they they understand this and and they're willing to absorb right. the, absorb the increase too. Right. And that and that's the beauty sometimes of what happens in agriculture. We don't look at everything as negative when there's money involved. I mean, we realize how important this is to our businesses. And so, you know, we're willing to to help make it happen. All right. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to have more from our state legislators this morning. State Representative Ken Rogers and State Representative Lisa Mosier are our guests on this edition of the Ag Issues Program, right here on 580 WIBW. And we are clear for those of you watching us on StreamYard. Uh, we're in a commercial break. And for, oh, go ahead. Did you want to talk about the K State Dairy then too? And yeah, just got an yeah. update there. Okay, that's fine. We'll, we'll we'll start that. I'll I'll answer that one. I think. I'm just I'm just going to say that I've visited with you know lots of dairy folks and and there's really a need for it. <laughs> right. Well, and and it's in the plan. It's just it's just. Um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of plans, so so you bet. And I'm not really sure what's coming across in the Senate. I I'll uh, uh, I don't think there's that much, and so um, but I think we're going to get we're going to work on a bill with conservation on trying to get money back to the if the counties give more to local conservation districts, like for for staff, then we will uh, we will work on that as well, um, and. Uh, the um oh there's a couple other things we're dealing with the you know the ag gag law or i guess that's not the proper term for it but you know they had that new court ruling that so we have to update update that so got it so we'll be busy the next three weeks two and a half weeks plus taxes, budget, and everything else. <laughs> We've been, it's been out there that if we don't come up with a tax plan that everybody can agree on, that she may call a special session. Yeah. All right. And see. Stand by for those on StreamYard. We're back on the Ag Issues program here on 580 WIBW and live on StreamYard as well. 
of our annual monthly legislative uh, program during the Kansas legislative session. We're joined on the program by State Representative Lisa Mosier from Wheaton and State Representative Ken Rogers, who is the chair of the House Ag Committee from AGRA. And uh, State Representative uh, Mosier is the vice chair of that committee too. Ken, let me start with you. Uh, last week on the Ag Issues Program, uh, we had folks on from the Kansas Dairy Association and Kansas Dairy Commission. Uh, last year, they gave their dairy needs assessment uh, to those in the Kansas legislature, but it also has to do with is the state or uh, uh, when the state, hopefully, uh, would be able to provide funding, of course, uh, for, the re uh, for the modernization of their dairy teaching and research unit at Kansas State University. And I just wanted to get your guys' thoughts on uh, where that may stand right now. Well, Greg, thanks. I mean, I mean the dairy industry has made a big push, uh, especially this year, but even last year, uh, we've been able to uh, have some monies uh, kind of directed back to uh, Department of Agriculture, back to, uh, you know, uh, aim point was one at that time, Greg Dowd was, uh, the principal there and, and they did, uh, kind of that needs assessment was able to make that presentation. And, uh, obviously there's a need, uh, Kansas dairy, uh, farmers continue to grow. Uh, Kansas continues to be a big player in the dairy industry. And, and, uh, we, we, I think we all know that the dairy, uh, farm, the dairy teaching facility at K-State does need to be upgraded. Uh, I'll just be honest with you. Um, there were a lot of needs uh, within the Department of Agri or within the College of Agriculture, at Kansas State University. President uh, Richard Linton came in as as being an Aggie and being somebody that is uh, very much uh, well versed in some of the things that he's done and the stops that he's made. You know, they they identified uh, a plan to move forward, and. Uh, of course, one of the first ones was the grain sciences and, and that and what we're seeing on campus around Weber and updating, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, Weber Hall and call and and all those things. And and then that's kind of phase one. Uh, I continue to understand that uh, the dairy is in phase two. Uh, the other thing, though, that has happened is uh, the industries that have come together uh, bring uh, significant dollars with them as well. And so that's kind of where we are, I think, right now is trying to identify uh, those uh, other uh, kind of public and private partnerships uh, that can come together and and do this. I mean, the, the time I, I understand is right. And we do have uh, a surplus, really, quite honestly, in our coffers, uh, but there are a lot of needs. And so uh, we're also kind of following the lead of Kansas State University, um, you know, for the state to come in and say, K-State, this is going to be your priority. Uh, sometimes that works. And sometimes, um, you know, the legislature doesn't, you know, we're not really in the business of micromanaging. I know some of our colleagues would love to micromanage uh, football and basketball sometimes, <laughs> but uh, our role is uh, to provide the funding uh, for these institutions and so um, in, in, for educational purposes and yes this is one of them and so um, I think this is all in the mix I think we'll continue to uh, to uh, discuss things within folks at the College of Agriculture and the broader university that, that this is uh, one of those priorities but there are a number of priorities so um, you know, I, I think with Hillmar and, and uh, the president of Hillmar Cheese is supposed to be coming into the state, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. He had to postpone due to bad weather a few weeks ago. And so we'll get an update there and also get their take on uh, those needs and, and how we as a state can can help them and, and other folks within the within the industry. Now, that may be a political answer, but that's about the best I can give you. Lisa, anything you wanted to add to that as well? I've had the opportunity to visit with uh, Janet Bailey. She's the CEO of Kansas Dairy Commission and the Kansas Dairy Association. And I've also been to uh, one of their meetings. Uh, Kansas Dairy presented the, the case for the new dairy at, uh, in our Ag Committee meeting this, this year and also at Rural Caucus. Um, and that came complete with Cole Hall ice cream, which was a big bonus for, for everyone there. But um, yes, I, I do agree with Ken and with Chairman Rogers being on appropriations, you know, when that when that funding 
does come through, I'm sure it will be supported by many. But um, yes, the the dairy at K-State, along with, you know, like he said, the other needs, um, it's all in the pipeline and we'll we'll see how soon we can get something to happen. To both of you, we, we mentioned that it was turnaround time, which means what you accomplished in the House goes to the Senate and it goes the other way. Uh, what has been talked about and done in the Senate now comes to the House. So, Ken, I'll go back to you. Uh, what do you anticipate uh, that you guys will be tackling that uh, will be coming from the Senate? I think the Senate only has a couple of bills that we'll have. They did have a couple of water bills that would go to Representative Minix's uh, committee. So um, I don't think any really heavy lifts or a couple of things that were in the House that did get blessed that, uh, or that we will be dealing with. We'll, in, we'll reintroduce them in, in the Appropriations Committee because that's an exempt committee. And one of those dealing with uh, our local conservation districts and if counties, uh, county commissions, uh, county tax base uh, provides more money to the local districts for support that the state would up that amount. So that's one thing we're going to be working on. Also, there's some things for protection. If you hire someone uh, for your livestock operation that wants to do harm, videotape or, or do things and try to put your operation in a bad light, there's been a new court case. And so we need to update our uh, our, uh, our situation there. That was working its way in the Senate. It stalled. And so we've been able to talk with leadership and they say, yeah, I can. And so I'm planning on introducing that. We get back on Wednesday morning in appropriations and then we will, we will get that. That is, uh, that is critical that we need to uh, continue to uh, support and uh, to protect uh, our animal agriculture interests here in the state. Yeah, because, uh, you know, it's known as ad gab laws, Lisa, in the recent court case, court decision, that came down. Uh, it's important to, you know, make sure to keep looking at the uh, regulations that we, that the state currently has. Exactly. Well, of course, there's still many things yet to come. I know taxes uh, for both of you. Obviously, uh, uh, the recently passed tax bill that was vetoed, and then uh, not uh, the the, uh, the vote was not there to overturn the veto but still more of that yet to come as well, I, w I would assume. Yeah, I, th that's probably the, the, the big thing. There's, there's, there's probably two big things left, and that is the budget, which we'll continue to work on strong this week. Uh, but uh, a tax plan, leadership wants a tax plan, uh, but we're miles apart. The governor does not want a flat rate. Uh, Republicans do want a flat rate, and so um, we we had we we just fell just a couple of votes short. Uh, I you know now is not the time to get into the reason why. We just need to pick up you know and and move forward. But one thing, Greg, we found even this weekend, folks want a tax break. They want their money back. We have a surplus of over three billion dollars that needs to go back to the folks here in Kansas, the taxpayers. People want property tax relief. We cannot go home without something that is. That is egregious of all the things that we've done and to not be able to do that and to, and to not bring a good budget. I mean, that's that's what we're here for. That is what we're here for. And that's that's frustrating that, you know, that uh, politics get in the way, especially in election year. We're trying to uh, make points rather than actually do the right thing for for folks in Kansas. And, you know, Lisa, both Ken and you on the land that you have right now, boy, that is so important on what you're seeing for, as for instance, for property tax relief. Absolutely. And I just would say amen to everything Ken said about the tax situation. It's it's vital that, that we come up with a plan that we can walk out of there in early May and say, we have given tax relief to Kansans. There are, there are, um, there are many good things I think that we want to do, you know, an income tax reduction, folks on Social Security, folks in our military. I mean, there, there's a good plan out there and, uh, you know, and, and it is balanced. I think sometimes we, we love to throw, uh, you know, past governors out and, and talk about that. Well, there, that was a different time. That was a different set of circumstances. You have almost a whole new 
legislature from that time and uh, and the world has changed and so uh, I think that's that's kind of unfair sometimes when when you know we try to make political points rather than you know, like I said rather than doing the right thing and and you know there's there, there's credit there's enough credit to go around for all this and most Kansans I believe will realize that that you know they want relief and if we deliver it in a bipartisan way, through you know the couple of our branches I, I think people will be okay with that all right state representative ken rogers as always appreciate you coming on to the program thanks absolutely thanks and state representative lisa mosier glad to have you back on the program and appreciate you coming on this morning it's good to be back thank you very much greg and that is our ag issues program for this morning here on 580 wibw Stay with us when we come back on 580 WIBW. We'll get an update on the news headlines and we'll check the weather forecast that comes up next.